I might see I'll you pray. Tomorrow. All right. Shh. I'll pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for your son, Jesus. Father, thank you for the beautiful sunshine that you are blessing us with this morning, Lord. I just pray that you will be with us as we go over your word, Father God, and just um, let it apply to our lives. And I thank you for everyone that is on here this morning. And um, may you be blessed and honored and all we say and do in Jesus' name. Amen. So right away, we're going to look up, and I'm going to warn y'all, we're going to do a lot of scripture this today. Romans 12, 12. <laughs> Excuse me. What are you doing? Right in Romans 12, 12, Ben. If somebody wants to read, don't be shy. I got it. Okay. He said 12 to 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 12. I know, I know. Let me try to find it. I'm blind. You just said you got it. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Yes. Okay. Can any one of you think of something that people do constantly? or something that you feel like you are constantly doing? Eating. Eating? <laughs> Working. Working. And phone. Amen to that. Working. Yes, that's what I feel like I do all the time. Worry. Huh? Meredith? Meredith had a good one. Well, I already got her what she said. Say it again, Meredith. What? Say what you just said. I, I'm only oh. what you said. Checking your phone. Checking your phone. Oh my goodness, that's a really good one. Oh. Somebody Scott said worry and stress. Fear. Fear. That's what people are doing constantly. Yeah. Maybe one of you or two of you were thinking about how your younger sibling constantly wants to play with them. Or you know someone who continually smiles or continually bites their nails. That's the word, me. The word or continually plays video games. <clears throat> the word constant or constantly means always. There are unhealthy ac activities that people do constantly, like overeating or playing too many video games. Oh, I put it in there. And other things that are really great for our well-being if we do them constantly like exercising, caring for each other, and our topic for today, praying. So I know, especially the middle schoolers that have been with me and my children, they'll come to me with something. Mm -hmm. Well, have you prayed about it? Pray about it. Mom, is that the only thing you can say? Well, that's the best thing I can say. Pray, pray, pray. So like Romans 12, 12 said, rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. Hold on a second. What is prayer and how does it work? Prayer is much more than just giving a list of desires or wants to God as if he were a Santa Claus in the sky. Prayer is acknowledging and experiencing the presence of God and inviting his presence into our lives and our circumstances. It is seeking the presence of God and releasing the power of God which God gives us the means to overcome any problem. And I'm going to stop right there for a minute. And, um, uh, the, you know, prayer has been, prayer has always been very important to me. And um, I know the power of prayer. I tried to instill the power of prayer in my kids. This week, um, our family has been dealing with something. And um, the only thing that I could do is pray. That's the only thing I could do was just get on my knees and pray and cry out to him. And I will tell you, we've seen a breakthrough and um, God is so good and God answers prayer. And I can't say it enough. So for all of y'all that are tired of hearing me say, pray about it, deal with it. I'm not going to stop saying it. So now we're going to get, I'm going to read Matthew 18, 18, the message version. Matthew 18, 18, but I'm going to read it from the message version. Actually, I'm going to read 18 through 20. Take this most seriously. 
A yes on earth is yes in heaven. A no on earth is no in heaven. What you say to one another is eternal. I mean this. When two of you get together on anything at all on earth and make a prayer of it, my father in heaven goes into action. And when two or three of you are together because of me, you can be sure that I will be there. God gives us authority on earth. When we take that authority, God releases power to us from heaven. When we pray, we bring that power to come upon everything we are praying about. And we allow God to work through our power. I understand that, Scott. Just letting you know. We are humbling ourselves before God and saying, I need your presence and your power, Lord. I can't do this without you. And um, that is definitely was our prayer this week. We could not do it without God's power in his presence. So let's look up John 16, verse 23. <laughs> what are you doing? Reagan had to jump up because she had to sneeze. Okay, come back over. John 16, 23. I got it. Go for it. Now, okay. And that day you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly, I tell you, my father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Thank you. Praying in the name of Jesus gives us authority over the enemy and proves we have faith in God to do what his word promises. God knows our thoughts and needs, but he responds to our prayers. Praying not only affects us, it also reaches out and touches those for whom we pray. When we pray for someone, we are asking God to make his presence a part of their life and work power, powerfully on their behalf. That doesn't mean there will be an immediate response. It may take days, weeks, months, or even years, but our prayers are never lost or meaningless. Now we're going to jump to James 5, 16. Somebody other than Justin want to read? I didn't mean that rudely, Justin. I got it. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has, the, has great power and produces wonderful results. Amen. Jesus is our role model. We are to observe him and do what he does. Now we're going to look at John 14, 12, and then John 15, 7. So, let's Sorry about the hopping around. You warned us. I did warn you. <clears throat> okay, I have John... Yeah, I have John 14, 12, Mama. Okay, and then the other one after that would be John 15, 7, just in case somebody else wants to read it. Hold I on. got that. Okay, thank you. Ready, Mama? No, Wait a minute. No, I can't find it. Yep, I'm ready. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than, than, they, than these because I'm going to the Father. And see, Jesus himself set the example for us. He went to the Father. And so if he goes to the Father in prayer, it is more important, just as important, if not more, for us to go to the Father in prayer. John 15, what did I say? Seven. Okay, here you go. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. Jesus used scripture to rebuke the devil in the wilderness, and we should use God's word as our weapon when we pray as well. Now we're going to go to Hebrews 4.12.
For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and judge, judges the thoughts of attitudes of the heart. Mm -hmm. Okay, one more verse. Isaiah 55, 11. Y'all thought you were saved from going to the Old Testament, right? Mm -hmm. Isaiah 55, 11. Be nice if I could find it. Number two, Jeremy goes for judging me for testing me for. Ah, there we go. Isaiah 55. I got it. Thank you. It is the same with my word. I send it out and it always produces fruit. It will accomplish all I want it to and it will prosper everywhere I send it. I like that version. What yeah, version is that? New Living Translation. I like the that. The one I use with the children and the youth. Okay, cool. Uh, and this is what mine says. I think mine's NIV. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. <clears throat> I don't know if any of you have ever, when you have prayed, have ever used scripture within your prayer. I mean, God wants us to do that. He says to do it. He says, you know, we can you know, say, God, your word says this, you promised this. And um, God wants us to pray like that. <clears throat> the re word constant in, the, in, script, it, the, the, in scripture doesn't mean that every minute of your life you are praying. It means to persist in prayer, to keep at it. It is the opposite of random, occasional, or sporadic. Which word do you think best describes your prayer life? And y'all can either speak up or not, but just something to think about. Constant, persistent, occasional, random, or sporadic? What were the words again? Um, constant, persistent, occasional, Random or sporadic? Mine's probably occasional. Well, I know. Um, Not enough know, anyway. Right. You know, there are times when I find myself praying all the time. And then there are times when I get so busy, caught up with life that, you know, my prayers are, aren't what they should be. My prayer life definitely isn't what it should be. Yeah, I think my yeah, I don't think mine's like constant, but I don't think mm -hmm. it's occasionally, so it's like persistent. Mm hmm Scott, you said you have the New Living Translation. Yeah. Will you read Romans twelve twelve out of that? Yeah. Romans twelve twelve. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. Sometimes it can be tough to keep on. This verse begins by reminding us to rejoice in hope. Why? Because we, you will face difficult situations in the hope that God, and hope that God fills you with all. Well, I cannot speak this morning. Because you will face difficult situations in the hope that God fills you with, will give you the strength to endure. The next portion of that scripture says to be patient in trouble. How many can agree that that is pretty hard? That that's probably one of the hardest things I know for me is to be patient, especially when um, I know things are going wrong and I want to fix it. You can't do that without God's help. You might be able to be patient for a while, but eventually you'll find that your own strength is not enough. And that is so true with me because I want to fix things, especially with my kids. I want to fix it right then and there. I want to be mom and just make everything all better. The next part of the scripture tells us keep on praying or be constant in prayer. That is simply the act of talking to God and spending time with him. 
And the more you do it, the more you will develop your, your relationship with God. So we define prayer as simply talking to God. But even more than that is listening for God to speak, to tell you as well, to speak to you as well. I did not write that well. We all have at least that one friend, that one friend that does all the talking in the relationship. Can y'all relate to that? Do y'all have somebody in your life that has that one friend that just does not shut up? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Why are you smiling, Anna? <laughs> You're muted. I have a I have a friend like that. You do. Well, yes. so do I. And her name is Stacy. And y'all probably heard me talk to talk to y'all about her before. She was that one friend that's more like forced family. But when I see that she calls, I literally have to take a deep breath before I even answer the phone and prepare myself. It's just. <laughs> And then I have to take several deep breaths after the phone call. It's, it's awful. Sometimes you might have something you really want to tell them, but they won't allow you to get a word in edgewise. It can be frustrating. Who enjoys cooking? You? Blake? Do you I like love to cook? cook. I like baking more, but yeah. Baking. Sure. I like to cook. Whoa, that's an echo. Reagan, you like to cook. That's the bake mom. She does. I like to cook meals. Yeah, I like to bake more. We really like eating it. <laughs> you want to be a chef, or you just enjoy creating really good food. So you get this recipe that looks amazing, and you have all of the ingredients. And I think Reagan has done this actually. And how about this? The person who created the recipe is going to help you every step of the way. But instead of following the recipe or listening or directions from that person, you decided to wing it and you really mess it up. <laughs> yes, you have. Nothing comes together right. In fact, it looks like a ruined mess. You feel frustrated, stuck, disappointed in yourself and even annoyed because of the time and ingredients that you wasted. And all but along- But you eat it anyway. Huh? But you eat it anyway. <laughs> And all along, there was someone who was waiting for you just to ask for help. That is our prayer life with God. God made you, and he knows more about you, your personality, weakness, and strengths than anyone else does. And he wants you to have an awesome life. He has given you instructions on how to live and the answers to your questions about life and his word. He is also always willing to guide you if you will just listen. You might be thinking, God has never spoken to me. I don't even know what God's voice would sound like. Well, the more you listen for his voice, the more you, more you will hear it. And maybe you just haven't asked for him to speak to you. Most of us don't give our opinions unless we are asked. God wants you to ask him. I want you to remember the value of prayer and the importance of being in constant prayer. Keep, keep going and growing in your relationship with God. He loves you and wants to guide you through the ups and downs of life. There is a benefit to being constant in prayer. You are filled with God's hope and learn to recognize his voice and depend on his guidance in every area of life. So I was very specific in my prayer life this week. Um, very, very specific. And um, have y'all ever prayed for something and God allowed it? to um, God answered your prayer and even though you prayed about it and he answered your prayer, it was still, okay. I prayed and asked God to reveal truth this week. And when I say I prayed about it, I was face down on the floor in a supine position crying out to the Lord, praying about things. And, but God answered my prayer. And even though some things, um, he answered my prayer bigger than I thought he would. And, um, but he did that in order for the next process in our lives to be able to tap it. And so God definitely answers prayers. 
So be careful what you pray for, <laughs> because he, he will answer it above and beyond. Um, sometimes, I mean, it, it was his will to answer it that way. And I'm so glad that it was because we needed that. Remember that while God has a perfect plan for your life, Satan has a plan for your life as well. And that's what I think some people forget. Some people say, yeah, God, you know, I know God has a plan for me. And but we also know that Satan is alive and well in this world. Um, if you just turn on the news, um, you, you can't miss it. Satan is at work. But he won't be able to successfully do what he wants to do if his power has been overcome by prayer. And that is the only way that we can defeat Satan is by praying and being in God's word constantly. Um, somebody read Matthew 12, 29. Again, how can anyone enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man? Then he can rob his house. In other words, we can't have any effect on the devil's territory unless we first bind him and forbid him any authority there. James 4, 7, and this is one of my favorite verses. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And I think in this world, especially in this day and age, we constantly need daily to resist the devil and to ask God to put a hedge of protection around our hearts and our thoughts and our eyes, the things we see, the things we hear, the things we say, my, our mouth, me especially, my mouth. And um, I'm always asking God, please take hold of my tongue um, because Satan's going to creep in anywhere and everywhere he knows our weaknesses and he's going to he's going to work at it so what are some situations or circumstances that remind you to pray obviously when somebody's sick go ahead all right yeah that's good um right before a big race right before you what right before a big race Oh, a big race. Yeah. When I'm scared. When you're scared, definitely. When you're about to eat. Well, for our blessing. Okay. So most of those equate to when we need him. When we need him. Do you feel like you should pray more? I think everybody can say yes on that. For sure. What or who makes you feel like you should pray more? My mom, oh my. because she sees us pray about it so much. Well, I'll tell you, um, I didn't get that way by myself. I had wonderful praying, God-fearing grandparents, and they lived in North Carolina. And when I would spend the summers down there, one of my favorite memories of them is waking up in the morning and seeing the two of them at the kitchen table with their Bibles open doing their devotions and I wouldn't even, they would say good morning to us, but they wouldn't offer conversation until they were finished with their prayer time and their Bible time. And that's just, that's just been instilled in me through them. And um, I also remember when I was younger, um, I've told y'all before about my dad and um, him being an abusive alcoholic. And the only thing that got my mom through, I honestly believe was the power of prayer. <clears throat> this is a great time. Oh, wait a minute. How often do you think God wants you to pray? All the time. And that doesn't mean you have to be on your knees all the time. I mean, just talk to him. You don't always have to go, oh, dear father in heaven, every time you pray. Just constantly be talking to him in your heart. What do you think it means to be in constant prayer? Well, I kind of just described that, but. 
Well, I think one of the things that with constant prayer and even what you were saying, what it means to pray all the time and, and, and incorporate prayer into our life is um, I'll tell you hands down. One of the things that's changed my language, how I carry through life and everything like that is I, I pray for things constantly. Sometimes it's just a little sentence or yeah. if I'm struggling with something, um, you know, I, I memorize a lot of scripture. Like you were saying earlier, I use scripture as part of my prayer. Now, I don't always remember the reference. I can tell you a lot of verses, but I can't always tell you where to find them. Right. But you know what? God doesn't care whether I know where to find them as long as he knows they're part of my life and I can quote uh-huh. them. And he knows that they're in your heart. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And that It is important that we use scripture in our prayer life. And um, I feel like it's very important. I'm constantly telling God, you know, your word states, da, 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 da. You promised that you will never leave me or forsake me. And um, God wants us to do that. He, In other words, he wants us to throw his word back in his face. Because well, I think that shows, us our, shows him our faith. And I think constant prayer is something that helps keep us focused throughout the day. I mean, right. I think too many times we think prayer has got to be this long, flowery. Mm-hmm. You know, I used to always think, you know, don't call me to pray in church because I can't pray the 30 minute long prayer. And exactly. Don't have to say the offertory prayer on Youth Sunday because I don't know the right words to say. I'll tell you, years ago, one of the best offertory prayers I have ever heard. And to this day, <laughs> I remember it like it was yesterday. It was Youth Sunday and the students had taken up the offering. And the guy named Jason Allison, and he won't mind me telling you his name, Jason was always a man of few words anyway. He, he walks up to the front and he, he volunteered to say the offertory prayer when none of the other guys that were taking up the offering would. So he walks up mm-hmm. to the microphone to say it right before the offering. He says, dear God, this is your money. You use it however you feel that it'll bless the most people. Amen. There you go. <laughs> I was like, I have never heard a better prayer. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. Because sometimes we over. Yeah. We use yeah. Verbiage. Uh, right. You, know, you need help controlling your language. Ask God to help you control your language. If you right. need help controlling your attitude, ask God to keep your attitude in check. Mm-hmm. Well, I know during um, um, my devotion time or whatever, I know that I'll pray more when it's just me and him, like behind closed doors. You know, that's where I feel like I can just pour out everything to him. You know, I like that in the in the movie War Room, the little prayer room. Yeah. Not everybody's got to have a prayer room, but I love post notes and writing notes and mm-hmm. putting notes in the Bible. and Definitely. And that's what I've told my girls before, to write your prayers down. Some, you know, to me, it's better. How would you explain prayer to a friend? A conversation with God. Okay. Yeah, it's just talking to God. Can you think of any stories in the Bible where someone prayed and God answered their prayer? Oh, when he wanted wisdom. When who wanted um, wisdom? Solomon. Um, the the old people. I forgot their name. Um, that one. <laughs> Abraham and Sarah. Yes, sorry, it just like left my mind. <laughs> Wait, Hannah, not Hannah, Hannah, but like Hannah and the wife. Like, when pray for. she wanted a baby, <clears throat> she had to wait a very, very long time. So did Sarah. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorites is Elijah on Mount Carmel with the prophet. Mm-hmm. Of Baal. mm-hmm. You know, the, the prophets of Baal have been up there for hours chanting and raving and praying for mm-hmm. their gods to do something. And and then Elijah just stands up there and says, okay, God, have at it. Show them who's Show really up. <laughs> you know, And it's like one sentence and, and, you know, God shows up. Yep. Yep. And, you know, there was never any doubt in Elijah's mind that, that God was going to show up. Right. Right. Do you consider your prayer life to be private or is it something that you are comfortable talking about with others? In the middle. 
in the middle. I don't mean talk, you know, I don't necessarily mean praying in front of other people, but do you talk about your prayer life and tell people, you know, I'm praying about this or I have prayed about this and God answered my prayer this way or God didn't answer my prayer this the way I wanted to, but let me tell you what God has done. Do y'all talk to people about prayer? <coughs> Yeah, I talk about what I'm praying about. I don't say specific, you know, specifics and stuff. But, you know, mm -hmm. I like with my mom being sick. I've had lots of people offer to prayer for, for me. And I prayed for mm -hmm. them when they've had family sick. And we've right. talked about, you know, what happens and how great he is and all that. Mm -hmm. There's well, this one, one new nurse at my work. And um, she's an odd one. She's very different. She's very weird. And just strange, her personality. But one day, it wasn't long after she started, um, this other nurse, the day shift nurse, had was it there. And her, I know that she's a Christian, and um, her and I have often shared verses and talked to one another. And um, I told her, I'm praying about so-and-so. And that girl looked at me. She goes, well, why are you going to do that? I thought, wrong person. <laughs> wrong day <laughs> I ain't the one so and I just had to back off a little bit because I have to remember that maybe she didn't grow up in a Christian life I don't know her background and I had to tell her you know prayer isn't just about fixing the situation that you're praying about or fixing the person that you're praying about it's also about bringing you peace it gives you peace um, there is somebody that um, I am very upset with right now a couple of people. I, I'm angry. And I told God I'm angry. I told God, you've got to free, help me to forgive them. Because I am that upset. I am that hurt. And I'm that angry. Um, but me praying for them and praying that has given me peace about it. I'm not bitter. But I, I am upset. So prayer helps us most definitely. And like Scott said, sometimes people say they aren't good at praying. And we don't have to be good at praying. We just have to be honest because God looks at our heart. Well, I, think, I think you had a, a key note there too, Sherry, that I think it's important to realize that our prayers don't always have to be flowery and sweet and nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't, we don't always just have to go to God and talk to him in a nice, calm tone. Our right. God is a great big God who made everything. He can certainly handle us having an attitude with him. Right. And he knows how yeah. we feel anyway. So we might as well just tell him, God, I'm mad about this. You know, this person. Well, the Bible not mad at him. Uh, you know, it's not big enough to hang, handle your, I tell people that all the time. People are like, well, I'm just so mad at God. Well, have you told him? Yeah. I don't want to tell God how mad. Look, God's a great mm -hmm. big God. He can handle your anger. I promise you. Right. And, I remember. And, Mm -hmm. Your comment that said prayer gives you peace, that's one way that if you're angry, you can get peace is by venting and letting God know that, yeah. you know what, I'm kicked off about this and I'm not mm -hmm. happy what's going on in my life right now. And God, you need to, you know, I expect you to do something about it. And I mean, mm -hmm. some Christians are afraid to pray that way because they think it angers God. But I, mm -hmm. I'm i a big believer that, that at the heart of it, prayer is communication. Absolutely. And it's like talking to your friends. You know, mm -hmm. if I get mad at Hannah, I'm going to tell Hannah I'm mad at her. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to mumble around and kick the ground and, and everything. Mm -hmm. else. Or if you're mad at God, then tell God you're mad at him. Right. I remember um, what long after we moved to Virginia, so it's probably in 2003, 2004. Um, my uncle in South Carolina had an aneurysm, a brain aneurysm. And he was hanging on for his life. And he was shipped to one hospital in South Carolina. Then they were flying him to Duke University. My mom and I decided we were going to go meet them at Duke University. While we get to the hospital, they changed their mind. They were flying him to Atlanta. So we went all the way to Duke University for no reason. And um, I remember clearly one day and... Not to be vivid, but, you know, I'm a nurse. Nothing bothers me. The human body, things don't bother me. So I was in the bathroom one day, and I am just crying out to God. I'm like, why aren't you answering our prayers? Why aren't you healing 
my uncle, why are you doing this? And God knew I was mad. <laughs> and, but he wants us to be raw and real with him because he knows us. He knows our thoughts. He knows our hearts. He knows our emotions. He knows how we're wired and he doesn't want fake and phony and all of that. He just wants us to be real. And I'll tell you the only way that I know how to get peace when I'm angry is to pray. That is, that is the only way I know how to bring peace in my life. And um, that's how I've gotten through um, my relationship with my dad because I'm not going to allow Satan to win. I know that is one of my weak weaknesses right now. And Satan knows that my relationship with my dad is, is hard but, and he wants to use that to turn me against God or to make me bitter and angry and hateful. I am not giving Satan that glory. He's not getting it from me. So prayer. So just remember God cares about you. He cares about every need in your life and he wants you to tell him all about it. And he wants you to be honest and real and also praying for someone else. The Bible says that we should intercede for other people. Um, when you know that they're not Christians or if God lays someone on your heart to pray for, pray for them. Definitely, if somebody just crosses your mind, definitely pray for them. And um, because you never know what that prayer might do for that person. So I know my grandparents' prayer is the reason why I'm a Christian today. And so um, you, made, you said earlier, do we share our prayer life with others? I think you don't have to share your specifics, but I think I'll tell you personally, one of the things that inspired to shape my prayer life was how people would share with me their boldness in prayer. Mm -hmm. we, had, we had one little lady at my last church, Jeanette Cloud. I swear, if that woman said she was going to pray for something, you might as well just agree to do it. Right, right. Because I, I, you know, I know prayer is a direct communication with God, but Jeanette had like, the red phone that goes straight yeah. to the president, that was her prayer life. I mean, right. if she prayed over something, it was a done deal. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it got to the point where I was like, okay, you don't have to pray, Jeanette. I'm just going to say yes. Right. <laughs> I know that's what's going to be the answer anyway. And I know that's what, you know, and she was one that helped shape my prayer life. We mm -hmm. had a, another family at one of my churches in Missouri that, that was the same way. I, the most prayer centered family I've ever been around in my life. Mm -hmm. And, they would pray about things and, and you, you would see results and they would share those results. They would mm -hmm. share how God had moved in their life through prayer. Right. And the difference being made. And to me, as a Christian, that's very encouraging when other people say, you know what, I'm doing this and it works. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I think, that, I think yeah. one of the things that Satan really slows down the movement of Christianity so much is because he, he convinces us to all be private. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And, and private and out. quiet. Satan wants yeah. us to be quiet. And I don't think, you know, I don't think that we have to air out our dirty laundry, but I think it's important to share with each other about where God's moving in our life and what God's doing in our life and and how God's doing it. And, you know, we don't have to talk about our past as much as we can talk about what God's done to get us through that past. Exactly. Exactly. I believe that. I believe it's important to share what God has done through prayer. Absolutely. I remember one time, and this was, I don't know how old the girls were, but, um, and this is one of the most beautiful things that I've ever seen as a mother. I walked into the room and they were kneeling on the floor, facing each other, holding each other's hands and just praying. And um, that, that was pretty awesome. That was awesome. And I know they pray together now, but sometimes it's more in between the bickering, but I know that they pray together, but um, definitely intercede on other people's behalf. Pray for people, pray for people who especially need to know Jesus. Don't ever stop praying. Ever, ever stop praying for those people because it's not too late. So speaking of that, unless Scott, you have more to add. No, no. I can talk about this all day because I really am a believer in prayer and my own God. 
Can you see and, that? And during the quarantine, interestingly enough, I have really probably poured more into daily Bible reading and into prayer than I have in a long time. Okay. Um, uh -huh. and I, I find myself sitting out back on the back deck some days, just praying and listening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yep. And that's the big part of prayer is listening. <laughs> is, and sometimes I want God to shout at me or to send this great big sign and answer my prayer. And that's not how God works. We're not going to see a burning bush. Yeah, we listening is the hard part sometimes because we get it the is. answer we don't want. Right. It is. Definitely. And sometimes God tells us to move forward in an area and that, you know, even though that's a positive answer, we didn't want the positive answer. Right. Right. That's what I was saying. You know, I prayed for for things this week. And even though I wanted God to answer my prayer, I didn't know he was going to quite answer it the way he did. But I am grateful that he did in the long run. Well, and you could do a whole, a whole, we could do a whole Bible study on how God answers prayer. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yes, definitely. And then I know my kids, I tell them, I'm praying for God to convict you and think I don't. <laughs> I well, pray for conviction on my life and for God to convict me on certain things. But I do. And I'll sit there and God convict them, make them miserable until they turn to you. They know well, it. I put it up in the chat the other day. I said, this is one of those things that or I put it up in the chat this morning talking about how I think prayer is one of the greatest weapons we have that we never use. Exactly. It is. And, you know, people are always, you know, talk, the armor of God, but we put on the armor of God, but we also need to cover that armor in prayer. So, I don't know. But I'll tell you, God has definitely worked through prayer this week in the Teapot home. So prayer is powerful. Don't doubt it. God is good. So we're going to do prayer request. Imagine that. Everybody's okay. so excited. To hear all these Michaela, stories. I know you have a prayer request. You always have one. Mm. Pretty girl. You're so tired. Pray that Michaela will have energy. <laughs> Anybody? Yeah, we, we need to pray for our country. Amen. Do y'all know what's going on in this world, you young people? All the craziness? Yeah, that's, yeah it's crazy. It is crazy. Um, we got to pray for this country. Pray. Yeah. And, you know, that's very biblical, guys, to pray for your nation. So you need to pray for the country that you live in. Also, I have a praise. Okay. I don't know if you are and yet when I mentioned that uh, my mom was doing better. Oh, I, I didn't hear that part. But yay. Yeah, so her, um, her last x-ray, her lungs were clear. Amen. So um, that was, that's a big deal, especially with this disease. Um, and, and it was, um, my sister hadn't shared with me before, but the last two x-rays progressively had been getting much worse. And the mm -hmm. doctor in Pennsylvania were only using hydrochloroquine as a last resort. Uh -huh. And the day that they were supposed to give her hydrochloroquine, my, my sister asked, well, can we get another x-ray first? And so we were at. And they said, yeah, sure, we'll do the x-ray. And they did the x-ray and she was totally clear. Amen. That's awesome. Continue awesome. prayer. Awesome. Yes, that's a praise. Absolutely. Considering I have a she's okay. considering she one and already on a feeding tube before this all started. She was a very mm -hmm. high, and she has Parkinson's. Absolutely! Wow. Um, oh, I know two. I know two people. One is from our church. Her name is Kathy Clifton, and one one is my friend. Her name is Ocean. Both of their moms have COVID, and. Um, Kathy's mo Kathy Clifton, her mom is in Utah and she fell and that's how they find out with my friend. I don't know how they found out, but I know she has it. So just keep them in their prayers. Okay. Okay. 
Means diagnosis. That's my nurse but saying. His friend's mom. Yeah, Is it his friend's mom? Oh, okay. All right, there you go. Anybody else? Pray for our church. Oh, I wanted to read y'all something real quick. Where did I put it? Oh, sugar. Hold on. Where did I put it? <laughs> Here. Here it is. Nope, that's not it. I'll find it. Y'all keep thinking about prayer requests because I know you got them. Oh, here it is. In, in such a fearful world, we need a fearless church. And that is a quote by C.S. Lewis. And that is so true right now because our world is, there's a lot of scary stuff going in our world. But we... <coughs> As Christians, not exactly the building church, we need to be fearless because we have a God who can do amazing, amazing things. But I like that quote. So I'm asking if y'all will continue to pray for our family, the crazy T-Ferds. In Salem Baptist. Anybody else? Well, Justin has a praise, and since he won't say it, Justin got a two dollar an hour raise this week. Oh, good. Yeah. So you can take us all out to dinner. That's right. I wish I got a two dollar an hour raise. I like Outback, Justin. Did he get it? Okay, I can bring I can bring Austin and Spencer then. Sure. What did you say, Chris? Did he get more responsibility or a new um position yeah, with that? I think they just realized how hard of a worker he is and how dedicated he is. Hey, I am a hard worker. Wait, so you work at our Outback? No, he that's where Scott wants him to take oh. you. He works where Ricky works. Oh, yeah. I need some good steak to ride about now. Oh, I'm just saying. You're just saying? And, oh, I have, I'm taking uh, my class tonight, so. Is that tonight you're teaching the class with Austin tonight? Yes. Okay. And we'll pray about that. Mm -hmm. He knows. And uh, I'm going to be starting uh, classes soon, so. Okay, Justin's class. Watch your elbow. Well, we got approved Friday for an online vacation Bible school. So I was wondering what that thing was that you sent. I'm like, yep, registration's open. <laughs> um, we are loaded for bear. We're open for 100 kids for online. Yep. How does that work? I guess I just have to wait. <laughs> we will, we will I'm trying to imagine it. We will pre-record yes, all the different parts. There'll be an opening and a closing, uh, Bible study, imagination station, and kid vid video or kid vid room. All that will be pre-recorded. And the week of vacation Bible school, each night at 6 o'clock, it will premiere live mm -hmm. nightly. So that as a family, you can sit down in front of your TV or computer and put up YouTube and have Vacation Bible School from 6 to 8 o'clock every night that week in your house. Okay, cool. Ricky, did you hear that? And we'll have student packs for the kids that we'll set up at church as a drive through so people can pull through and get the pack. And the pack will have the Bible study book for the kids as well as all the little science gizmos for Imagination Station and everything they need to participate nightly in Bible school. So you just and do the drive through one time. That? You'll drive through the, like, probably the Sunday or the Saturday before it starts, or maybe <laughs> we'll set up a drive through at church, and you'll drive through and pull up to the covert, and we'll hand you your, we'll check you off that you registered, we'll hand you a, a pack, and away you go. Cool. All right, I'll let all the other parents know. So they do have to register, so that's absolutely important they register. Okay. So we, okay. we have enough material. Hannah, you got drive. Okay. You're gonna register, right? You always register. Yeah, also, for me. I mean, I, I was gonna share yeah. this as an announcement. We're also. I'll do Drake. 
school that week where I will do that for my office. I'll show the opening and closing worship sessions as if we were in Bible school. Mm-hmm. And in between, I will teach the youth Bible study through Google for all the youth that will log in. So they'll get live Bible study taught by me nightly. So Okay. Very cool. Reagan, move that trash off the printer. It's very exciting. As many things as we've had to lose lately because of COVID, it was exciting to get the news of being able to add something back and kind of, you know, make it a little more special and do what we can to try to, you know, give everybody something to look forward to this summer. Right, right. And another prayer request about our youth ministry is we are moving forward. Uh, some of you already received information about this with our small group ministry that's going to start in July. And I am actively recruiting adult small group leaders and um, it's going to extend our Wednesday night time by about a half an hour. But there'll be a, a letter going out here this week to all the parents asking them to register their kids if they want them to participate in small groups. And then, uh, so this is very exciting part of the ministry. I'm looking forward to the tremendously and seeing where God takes us. Every, uh, every group I've been a part of that's done small groups, the youth ministry has grown leaps and bounds, and things have changed radically through God moving in, in the small groups. So mm-hmm. I'm very much looking forward to this new ministry. Very cool. Awesome. So pray for Salem Baptist, BBS, and everything. Anybody else? I actually don't have one this week. I can't think. Well, that's a praise, though. Then all your prayer requests have been answered. Yeah. Yes. That's a praise. You can pray, but there's a lot to be thankful for and grateful for. There's always something to pray about, so you can think about it. Anybody else? Reagan, you have a prayer request? Unspoken? Okay. <laughs> so what's going on with the um, praise team? They're still trying to figure it out. practicing. Okay. So we're going to pray for them, too, because I know that it's been... Um, Trial on the arrow with that. Okay. Jenny just said challenge is a good word. Challenged? Challenged. It's been a challenge trying to get yeah. their balance and everything worked out, but they're, they're progressing. I agree very with well. that. Okay. All right. So, Meredith. Yeah. Were you surprised about your birthday parade? Yeah. 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 <laughs> very cool well I can't wait to for everything to get back to where we can have youth events and be with you guys so I miss that alright is that it yep okay who wants to pray y'all all of y'all should be raising your hand we just had a whole lesson on prayer <laughs> I did a lot of praying this morning, so I don't even know what to pray about anymore. Except for the okay. prayer request. <laughs> All right. Do you want to pray? Go ahead. Mom, you did this to me last week. It's okay. God no, I prayed last week, so it's like I can't. Right, well, please pray. <laughs> okay. okay, my head's closed your eyes. You know the deal. Okay. Dear most gracious Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for Sailor. I thank you for I want to thank you for um, the truth to finally come out and um, for everything that has happened this week in our family, Lord. I just pray for that and I pray for, um, you know, moving forward, Lord. And, and I just pray for everyone else's family and everyone else's, you know, their personal things that might be going on with them, Lord. I just pray for them and I just pray that... Um, that they can just come to you with everything. And um, I just pray for our country and our nation, Lord. I know that um, it has been quite a struggle, especially in 2020 with like all of uh, all of the things going on. But I just pray for that. And I want to pray for our church and the decisions that we have to make and a praise for the VBS to actually get like going and stuff. I 
thank you for that. And um, for all the prayer requests that have been mentioned, I just pray for that. And thank you for you. Just now praying. Amen. 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 Oh, okay. So, any announcements, Scott, other than the norm?